G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global research and expedition boat. This week our sandblaster is still down, we've got a few things that we need to weld together to get the new fittings up and running so it'll be a, a working machine again. The nozzles arrived but we've got to build a new mixing valve um, and replace some of the ball valves on it, they chew out very easily. So we cracked on with some of the woodwork. We start making our wooden plinths to go underneath our cabinets. We've already fitted the studs to this wall, now it's time to start making some panels to suit and with the structural members already in, it's time to start building some storage for the starboard cabin. Remember these, the list of doom? Well, we gave them a bit of a hiding lately, so the front cabin got a bit of a bash and uh, the galley crossed off quite a bit of stuff to do on that galley now. A couple of people have asked about this stainless panel not going to the roof. So you can see it's there's a gap right the way along the top. Um, there's a reason why we didn't need to take it all the way to the roof, and it's because if you come back a bit, you can see these ribs, they're 50 mil down from the roof panel itself, from the deck head. We're gonna be bringing this down 120 mil of insulation. So our insulation is 60 millimeters thick per sheet. Two sheets, 120 mil. So when the insulation's on, it actually comes down to about here somewhere, right the way along. So this um, join, or this, this gap up here is gonna be well buried inside the insulation. Um, I also didn't want to have this hard up against the steel in case there's any expansion, contraction. I don't want it binding up and then bowing you know, on the sheet itself. I wanted to give it a little bit of room. Each of these holes has a little bit of slop, so it's a six mil bolt with a seven mil hole to allow for that as well. Um, so theoretically, there should be no reason why that sheet will bind up, and that's partly why there's that gap. It just didn't have to be absolutely bang on. You know, One of the woodworking jobs that we need to get done is some storage at the front of our cabin. So this contraption is gonna be a wardrobe on the left-hand side and then storage shelves on the right-hand side for clothes and shoes, that sort of thing. It's 450 mil wide from front to back, so we're going to strip our plywood sheets down into 450 mil uh, planks, and then we're going to cut them to the right length to suit the dimensions on this plan. I was never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Oh. Cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting. But the The doodacky that I'm building is a wardrobe and it's shelving and storage and stuff and it goes at the very far end of the uh, starboard cabin and it's 450 mil deep. So the easiest way to build it is to make a whole bunch of 450 mil wide strips out of a sheet of ply. It's an eight by four sheet. So we end up with a little bit of an offcut, but we end up with a bunch of these strips. And then from there, we can just go and start cutting them up into the lengths and the angles and whatever that we need. Simple. Kept on playing my part, wanted to give up because nothing was changing. But with you, it's so clear. And now that you're here, I see colors in every spectrum. Guess I finally learned my lesson. Because you grew all the pieces back to Right, and then the side. And I think to myself, thinking out loud, we won't need nothing else. Rest of our time, and I know it so well. I will always be by your side. Cause you put all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. I feel so free. I'm a sweet baby. We are bouncing around on jobs a fair bit. We've got wall panels to do, uh, we've got plinths to do, and we've got this wardrobe storage thingy majack that we've got to build. So right now I'm getting some templates ready so we can do the wall panels that go behind the fridge. Um, these are in the galley where we put the ribs, the wooden ribs or studs recently. 
yeah, I've got to figure out exactly what size these panels are because they're a bit of a weird shape. Okay, this is the wall that we've got to cover up. So we're going to put our insulation in between these wood studs. And I've got, it's too wide to get it out of one panel, so we're going to do a join. What I am going to do is run the join down the middle of this stud here. Um, the sheets that we got are 900 wide. And this wall, I think, from memory, is 1500. So we're going to have it, one panel here and then a skinny panel over here behind the fridge. So you won't actually see any of the join. It's going to be covered up by appliances. Um, now, the floor slopes off on an angle and the roof slopes off on an angle. So the panel itself will have square edges, but it's definitely not going to be square on the, on the top and bottom. So to do that, we use a template just by getting some strips of plywood. I cut them um, 3 inches or 75 mil wide. Um, I fit them on the sides where I want them, um, exactly square and everything, so they're going to be you know, bang on. Um, and then I start screwing in another piece of 75 mil ply top and bottom so that I've got the weird angles and whatever. I can then just pick that whole frame up, transfer it over onto the plywood, mark it out, cut it, and I know it's going to be bang on. Going all the way to the floor. Um, I don't necessarily want to go all the way to the floor. I'll probably go about five mil off, and then I'll run a bead of sealant around and that just allows a little bit of movement in the panel and the boat, all that sort of stuff, and the sealant itself will do the compression and expansion. If I put the wood hard up against it, I'm probably going to buckle that panel off at some point, so I want to give it a little bit of room to, to have some give. At the top, I've gone probably half an inch down, maybe three quarters of an inch down, um, 12 mil, 19 mil, something like that. Um, the reason being is the insulation is going to come down 120 mil from there, so I don't want to have it hard up against the roof because that's going to, again, give it another area that if I've got the measurements wrong and the boat moves, it's going to compress it and squash that panel and potentially buckle it off the wall. So we, we want to build in a little bit of wiggle room. One template. That should fit. Hopefully. And there's going to be more on the other side, 60 more on the other side. Yeah. 
This wall is ridiculous. So quiet. Yeah, yeah. And what? This thing's a bit um, refrigerator going off and on in the middle of the night. Our bed is on the other side of this wall, and the fridge sits here. And we have this unique ability to know exactly what temperature it is based on how much the fridge is running because it's about this far away from our ear. So that's why we're putting a shitload of insulation on this wall and the other side. Right, let's get it painted. So now that we've got the wall cut and basically ready to go, that needs to be epoxy. I'm going to mix up the epoxy soon and do that. I've got plinths to make, so I'm going to go and cut the lengths and then drag them up and mark the curve of the deck into them. But damn, what's a plinth? Okay, so these cabinets that were made are perfectly square and straight and lovely. Now this black piece you can see on this diagram, there's, it's straight where the cabinets are, but it's curved where it meets the deck. So I need to get these big long pieces of uh, timber here and then cut the deck curve into them, leaving the top straight so that we can build a platform for the cabinets to sit on nice and square. So this beam on the left hand side here is the uh, frontmost beam on the plinth for our main bench. If I get down low here, where that colour change on the floor is, that's roughly the centre line of the boat. We need to transfer the curve of the deck into that timber. So we've levelled this um, beam up, as you can see, with a block of wood, one at that end and then one down this end. Um, the beam's sitting level and what we need to do is transfer that curve in. So to do that we get a, just a piece of wood, stick a pen on top of that wood and run the, run the line right the way along the deck. You'll see in a second um, how we do that. And it transfers that curve nicely into the timber so we know where to cut. She's got to go down low. Oh, I see. And I've got to go up high. Yeah, clear my side. When we seal up our timber, whatever type of timber it is, it doesn't really matter, we use an epoxy glaze. It's, it's a two-part epoxy and the reason why we use it is it's quite thin, goes into the timber really well, but it's also capable of being a top coat. So um, it's UV stable and it means we don't actually have to put any other paint over top like a polyurethane or anything to protect the epoxy. So it just saves us a bit of time and also saves us a bit of cost not having to do that. I can change the past don't want to complicate things Maybe if I asked Was any of it real? Was it real? I can't believe how much resin these things are vacuuming up came down this morning to try and um, convert timber into sawdust. So this curve that runs along this here is the shape of the deck in the galley. Um, this is the centre line of the galley here, so one part of this hangs out over more over to one side than the other. What I need to do is basically run along this sort of curve. Now, a bandsaw would be the ideal tool to use, don't have a bandsaw, so we're going to figure out another way. I'm going to have a go with a skill saw. Um, I'll come in from each end because this curve here is sort of quite pronounced, but at each end it's not it's, it, the deck isn't necessarily perfectly curved, it's sort of more of a peak. Didn't realise that actually, but... Um, so I'm going to have a go basically coming in from each end and then sort of meet in the middle, see how we get on.
So when you're not a native woodworker and you need to hoe off quite a bit of wood, obviously the grinder is the best tool that we have available so that's what we're going to use. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That worked out well. Right, let's get this upstairs. While Jess does a town run, I'm gonna bypass doing some of this woodwork and get some painting inside done. Huh, that roller ain't turning. Right, it's going in the bin. The paint that we use here is an antibacterial, anti-mould type paint. It's got a 10 year guarantee to stop having anything growing on it. It's one of the main reasons why we use it between our insulation and the boat. Condensation is a big deal with insulation, so if we do ever manage to get water behind the insulation, we want to make sure nothing's growing there. These are the two plinths, so this one on the, this one just here hasn't been cut and this one here has been cut. And you can sort of see the difference. This one that you just saw us trim that big curve into and it fits the floor really nicely. So what the plan is, is basically duplicate it, make another one on this piece of wood here and it has to go over the back. We'll end up painting this as well. This will, I don't know what color this will go, maybe floor color, but we'll do a radius on this edge here. So um, any water that falls on this side, on like basically where you walk, will get trapped in here. This will work essentially like a waterproof tank, so no water is going to go through and go under the cupboards. I'm also going to build the plinth that goes at the back, self-draining. So if any water does happen to get there, like whether it's condensation behind the insulation or anything, leak on the pipe, something like that, um, it's going to run out. So I don't want any water to be trapped under these plinths. Um, that's exactly what caused the rust in the last set of um, structures that they built in here and I want to eliminate that. Something that you have to factor in when you're painting in Australia is the flies to epoxy ratio. You want to try and keep it to no more than two to one, otherwise you end up with a very lumpy surface. And they're notoriously hard to sand out. The next job is to turn these two oversized chopsticks into something usable. The front one is cut and trimmed to size, this one here. We have to deal with the back one. Over the back there, it's a nice piece of straight wood that, that needs to be trimmed. Now, the issue is the floor, you have the curve, that's all good, we can duplicate the curve, that's no problem, but the floor slopes down in this direction, so it's got wobbles and stuff as they've welded it and whatever. Basically, between the back one and the front one, the floor, the floor, that's it. That's just going mad bashing a door with a hammer. The difference between the two is quite noticeable, particularly over on that side there, so we have to take that into account. So what I'm thinking is screw them together um, as part of the way of getting them square to each other. 
but the other side of it is just stick it in and then use a level and use a square and see if we can transfer the lines across. So we'll give it a go, see what works. What I'm thinking is basically don't push it hard up against the wall. I don't need to. I'm going to leave myself maybe 100 mil, um, and that's going to be for things like pipes and plumbing, hydraulic lines, electrics, anything that needs to go down and through this um, deck. So the front plinth basically sits out here, which is not, so 600 is about here somewhere, um, which is the edge of the cupboards. We've got, I don't know, 50 mil step back or something like that. Um, I don't know what the normal amount is. I just made it 50 mil. Um, so yeah, the other plinth will be somewhere in about here. And then what I'm gonna do is brace them in between, but I'm not gonna join that brace to the floor because I want a gap so that they can be self-draining. Like I said, I don't want any water or moisture or anything to be able to get stuck in there. I want it to run to the end so I can deal with it. So yeah, measuring stick. GoPro, start recording. Why are you sitting high? You are definitely sitting weird. So we need to shave some off that. GoPro, stop recording. Lovely. Goodies have arrived. This is something I ordered the other day for an upcoming job. It's a large box. Oh yeah. So these are six inch bends for the exhaust. And then we've got a six to five reducer. So that goes on our turbo. And then, should be stainless five inch V-band clamp. Ha, ah, look at that. So that clamps our exhaust together onto the turbo. It's the wrong one. Okay, so this is the wrong one, but we're gonna use it anyway. This will work. We're gonna add that into the system. The one that I do need is down in the engine room. Let me show you. So it looks like this. It's a very simple flange arrangement. Basically, it's just a piece of pipe that's sort of flared up and out, and it mates onto this surface on the turbo, and then you have a, another V-band clamp just like this one here, and it basically clamps on and holds between the two. Let me just see if I can manhandle this. That clamps up tight, but you can kind of see how they sit against each other. This is why we always like to order as far in advance as we can, so we know that this exhaust job's coming up soon. Um, and yeah, had we not ordered it now, we would be basically stuck when the job arrives. So I'll get that organized now. We'll have the right parts sitting there, and then we get stuck into it. Next week, you're gonna see the sandblaster. It's turned into a fire breather. The floor is done. Plints, they're done too. We had to get some pesky pad welding sorted inside the galley, that's finished. And finally, we managed to cross some of our timber work off in one of the cabins.